This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a complex web of lies, and I've seen God Monster of Indian Flats, a western horror drama from Frederick Hobbs made back in 1973. It starts with the rancher's good day at a casino, a bad night at the bar, and his witnessing the birth of a mutated sheep. A scientist takes the organism to his laboratory for study, believing it to be what local legend has claimed to be a killer monster. As time goes on, it does grow into just that, a giant, freaky sheep monster. Meanwhile, the local leaders of the nearby tourist town are ignorant of such things, concerned more with keeping their people preoccupied with attracting business, preserving culture, and shunning a businessman's attempts to buy the land for mining purposes. Don't worry, the monster does show up eventually, but not right away. Actually, it's probably best to say up front that the monster itself doesn't quite do much at all, even when it does appear. Not that it's effective as a monster anyways, but that's besides the point. The film does put much more focus on its other story and subject matter, rather than become a traditional monster movie. With a heavy look at the corruption in the town and within its leadership, whether it be for classic financial gain or exploitation of power, or the continued upkeep of the Wild West imagery and culture for the comfort of the tourists and the town leaders. It's a bit of a mix between these two. And either way, it does all work well enough in the end, to the point that the monster itself could have probably been removed from the story and nothing would be truly lost. But obviously, we do still have it, and while it does give the movie a weird edge and an entertaining third act, it almost seems like they gave the movie the title that it has, either for the sake of false advertising or a poorly delivered metaphor. Even so, the social-political drama going on here is strong enough to overcome all the other underwhelming elements, and they do still try to bring it all together in the end. I think that if the filmmakers had just done a bit more with the monster, this movie could have feasibly been a sort of weird west kind of horror film. Instead, it's more of a western with horror elements. That notion is especially apparent in the film's technical details, thanks primarily to where the film was shot. It's almost fully a location shoot, minus a few interior sets, which obviously puts all the desert landscapes in full view, and more than enough attention on the town itself, with all of its western imagery contrasting with more modern amenities and practices. Visually, it's captured rather well, especially given the presumably low budget of the production and the limitations that would have come with that. That said, it's not exactly all that spectacular either, being another case of having a few good framing choices in a handful of shots, but otherwise being flat and practical. Editing can also be confusing in a few places, Usually when something hectic is occurring, but the filmmakers need to hide that they don't have the money to show it off entirely. Overall though, I do think that they've done the best that they can with what they have, and as a work of regional or outsider low-budget filmmaking, it really stands out against the others like it. It has room for improvement, of course, but all the ideas are still there. God Monster of Indian Flats, Frederick Hobbs, 1973. Three and a half stars. I'd go ahead and recommend it. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. You know, at some points this feels like it could have been two different movies. I don't think either of them would have hit as hard as they did when working together here, though. Maybe the film just needed more of the monster. <laughs>